This is Ken Pyle, and we're at SCTE 2014. We're at a company called Deep Fiber Solutions, with Mark Davis, the executive VP of uh, business development. Mark, you guys are showing something that many people think is impossible, but if it works the way you guys are showing, my gosh, it could really change the industry. Why don't you tell us what we're looking at? It really does work. Uh, what's so unique about it is we take the core out of a hardline coax cable by pumping in a soap basically a fluid that we pump into the end of the coax cable and what happens is we're able to compress the dielectric foam core and push the core right out of the end of the hardline coax cable which leaves behind a really nice tube or a micro duct that we can then blow in a microfiber cable back through at exceptionally low cost. And we'll talk about the benefits of that in a moment, but you know, past attempts at this, and I think this is why I've heard some skepticism, but they've really taken other techniques where they've used heat and other types of things right. to do this. That's right. There's old cable lore. I've heard about a Tom Warner guy in New York doing this underneath a, a street by putting a current on the center conductor and melting the dielectric foam. And that works for very short pieces. I'm talking 50 feet. But if you try to do a very long piece, three, four, or five hundred feet, or a thousand feet like you would have in between amplifiers, the problem is that conductor will sink to the bottom of the tube and short to ground. So you can't pull out just a couple of feet. So what's so innovative about this is we don't need heat. We can just use this soap dishwashing fluid to squeeze the dielectric foam core just enough to push it out the far end. Well, and you touched upon something very important there. You know, you have the distance between the amplifiers. We're talking quite a bit of distance there, right? That's right. It's a, usually a 1,000 feet, but it can be 1,500 feet. And we've done up to 1,400 feet of coring. Think about the coring process where we remove the core as being a span-by-span -span process. That's usually, if it's between lot lines and a feeder cable, maybe 100, 150 feet. If it's between amplifiers, it's 1,000 to 1,500 feet. So we core that on a span-by-span -span basis. But when we blow the fiber, we blow up to 4,000 feet through each of those pedestals at one time. So we can do very long fiber blows without cutting the cable, without splicing the fiber, or without figurating it at every vault or every pedestal. And uh, this is something you've actually done in the field, right? So, I mean, you have some experience so with have, this? Uh, we have customers today. We're doing jobs today uh, around the country. We've got four markets launched. We're adding new markets all the time. And so we do this today for node splits, for fiber deep applications. It's happening as we speak right now. And from a, um, a training standpoint, is there something, you know, is it complicated to learn? Yeah. So. I don't think the technique is comp complicated to learn. It, it is a patented process and it's very unique on how it all works. But once the engineers know on the cable side what they have to do to accommodate it, then it goes in very easily. In other words, when you have an amplifier location, uh, you may need to add a new node there if it had feeder cable pulling off of it or customers being served. So there's some slight modifications in how you do the engineering and design work. But overall, it's the lowest cost way to put fiber in the network. Is it one or two person crew type? Of thing? Yeah, so we have a four-person crew and we have everything we need to do the job that day and that's how we built up this truck here that you see in the background. It has a computer on board, it controls our pressures, it controls how much fluid is going in. We have 200 gallons of fluid on the truck and, and basically we can drive up to the location at the pedestal do, connect the fluid injector and we can core the cable. We can then use the high volume air compressor built onto the truck. There's a 200 PSI, 200 CFM air compressor built off the PTO of the truck. And that's these hose reels here for the air. And we use that for the fiber blowing. So we go in and lay a temporary cable. If it's a live cable, we'll put a temporary cable on the ground. It might be fiber or it might be coax. Then we'll do the coring on a span by span basis. And then we'll do the fiber blowing. Once we've got the fiber installed in the permanent, in this case, the aluminum conduit, then we'll cut over the temporary cable to the permanent fiber at that time. And so we also have one more vehicle with the crew, and that's a fiber splicing truck that if we have large fiber counts we want to splice, we can splice that day in the back of the truck. So our crew has RF talent because they're building temporary RF plants. They have fiber splicing talent because we need to cut it over that day. And then, of course, they know how to operate our mobile factory here, this you know, custom truck that we had built. So are you uh, offering this then as kind of as a service? It is a turnkey solution. So we'll go in and do everything you need to turn up the service that day. So we try to, if you're doing a temporary cable, you don't want to leave it overnight. So we'll put it in that morning, and then we'll come in, do all the coring blowing, 
splicing, turning over service that afternoon. So how much could a typical crew do in a day? So we can do three to 4,000 feet in a day, depending on the application. If you've got fiber to the home, it's a little bit less because you're usually doing every other lot line with a pedestal. So lower on the 3,000 foot side, but we've done more than 4,000 feet in a day. Now, before we get to the benefits, which are really cool, I want to ask you about the environmental impact. Uh, this solution, the soap solution, are there any impacts? No, there's no impact. It, it truly is dishwashing liquid. Now we add a thickening agent to it to, to keeps it from penetrating the foam core, but for the most part, if you get it on your clothes, you put it in the washing machine, your clothes will be cleaner than you went to work the day before. So it's it's really environmental friendly and we have a, uh, a safety data sheet that, you know, attests to that. And uh, and you'll see it. it it's, it's just literally sloped when you feel it. In fact, we get it made from a soap manufacturer up in the Northeast who makes variety of different types of liquid soap for a number of you know, household names. Nice uh, fiber to the soap here. So some of the benefits, it just, uh, you know, from a permitting process and, and that sort of thing, it seems like you can bypass a lot of those uh, yes. hurdles. So we do, uh, we don't have to dig. You know, this is the whole purpose. You don't have to disturb customers' lawns. You really don't have to go in and do any of the things that you would do in a normal digging or construction process. Um, so you get to avoid some of the pains associated with that. Uh, Occasionally, we do dig. If there's a buried splice, we will basically expose the buried splice and we cut out the old buried splice and we treat that as a fluid injection point or a core ejection point, just like we do a pedestal. So there's no difference when you find a buried splice. Um, so that's the only digging we ever do, but we do that pre-qualification on every span before we ever show up. So that can happen very quickly and there you might have to permit for that particular dig. But we also use a soft dig technology that allows us to use air to pothole that area and then at that point there's no shovels or sharp edges so in a lot of municipalities you don't need a permit to use soft digging technology. Well now imagine uh, the use case of digging under uh, uh, federal type of things, highways or bridges and that sort of thing must it be a really a uh, benefit here to this. Yes. In fact we've got a, a bridge crossing project coming up in two weeks. Um, the interesting thing is that they're most interested in a bridge attachment is how you connect to the bridge. Are you drilling holes in the concrete? Are you adding a significant amount of weight? Um, if you already have a coax cable across the bridge that you want to convert to fiber, uh, once we pull the core out, you'll find that the core is actually twice as heavy as the fiber cable that we put in. So we cut the weight in half by doing the core in the first place. And since we're not attaching to the bridge again, what would have taken a year and thousands of dollars in engineering fees to get a bridge crossing, we can now get in a few weeks. Wow, that's, that's remarkable. And uh, looking forward, uh, do you see this moving to the drop? Yes, we believe we have the technology to do it in the drop. Um, once we have this product, you know, really moving with a number of uh, MSOs, we hope to put a little more R&D money and bring that product to market. But we think it's possible to core an RG11 or an RG6 drop. Well, uh, Mark, I really appreciate you enlightening us here about uh, this cool offering. So thank you very much. Appreciate that.